In this set of lectures, we're going to explore how to find the area between two curves. Previously, we've looked at graphs of functions. Perhaps a graph is above the x-axis, and we've used the integral from one point to another to find the total area between the curve and the x-axis. Or perhaps the curve was below the x-axis, and again we've used an integral to find that area. And we know that if a curve is below the x-axis, then the numeric representation of its area is negative, and if it's above the x-axis, then the, the numeric representation of its area is positive. And so now we're going to consider a different situation if we'd like to find the area between two curves. So first, some things to consider. We're still really using integrals, and there's really only three situations we could have. One situation is our first curve, we'll say f of x is above the x-axis, and g of x, the second curve, is also above the x-axis. And what we'd like to do is find the area in between them. And in this case, what we're going to do is find the integral of the, our top curve, f of x, which will give us all this area between the curve and the x-axis. And we'll subtract from it the area between g of x. And when we subtract out that bottom portion, we'll have this portion left over, which is what we want. Right? So it's f of x minus g of x is what we'll integrate. Or more importantly, the upper curve minus the lower curve. Now the second situation doesn't really change what we do, although it can be misleading at times if we don't think through it correctly. So we could have, again we'll use f of x generically as a curve above the x-axis, and we'll use g of x generically as the curve below it, and in this case g of x is below the x-axis. The process is still the same, we're still going to be using f of x minus g of x, or the upper curve minus the lower curve. And here's why. When we integrate f of x, we're going to get a positive quantity for this area in black. And when we integrate g of x, we're going to get a negative quantity for this area in red. And when we subtract the positive quantity minus the negative quantity, we will get a sum of two areas, right? Because subtracting a negative is the same as adding, right? Subtraction is adding the opposite. So the total area will still be f of x minus g of x. And the third situation is, is similar. Right? The idea is still the same. I'll use f of x generically as my top curve, my upper curve, and I'll use g of x generically as my lower curve. Now when I integrate f of x, I'm going to get this area in black, and it will be a negative quantity, and it will be smaller than the area I get when I integrate g of x, which will also be a negative quantity. Right? So just hypothetically, let's say that the area for f happens to be, I don't know, negative 3 is the numeric value, and since the area between g and the axis is larger, it'll be a larger negative quantity. So we'll say in this case it's negative 7. And notice if I still use the upper curve, in this case f of x, minus the lower curve, in this case g of x, using my hypothetical numbers, negative 3 minus negative 7, still gives me a positive quantity, in this case positive 4. In all cases, when we're trying to find the area between two curves, we all the one principle is to integrate the difference between the upper curve and the lower curve. So let's look at some examples of this. There is an area that is bounded by these four curves y equals x squared plus x plus 2, x equals 0, x equals 1, and y equals negative x. So first let's go ahead and sketch a picture. So x equals 0 is the vertical line, that is the y-axis. 
x equals 1 is the vertical line that is through 1. y equals negative x has a slope of negative 1. And x squared plus x plus 2 is a parabola that's doing something like that. So what we want to figure out is this area here. Notice that x squared plus x plus 2 is our upper curve the entire way. Negative x is our lower curve. And these curves go in terms of x from 0 to 1. So if we can recognize all these situations then to find the area between the two curves we're going to integrate from 0 to 1 x squared plus x plus 2 our upper curve minus our lower curve which is negative x dx. Now this one's pretty nice because we can simplify our integral a little bit by combining some like terms. This is x squared plus 2x plus 2 dx. Don't want to forget that. Now we can integrate. When we integrate this we'll get 1 third x cubed plus x squared plus 2x from 0 to 1. Substituting in 1 we'll have 1 third plus 1 plus 2 minus 0 and so all together this will be 3 and 1 third or 10 thirds for the area between the two curves. We've got our integral and we've got our area. Let's consider one more example. How about y equals 6 minus x squared, an upside down parabola, and y equals x. So it's generally helpful to consider the graph. 6 minus x squared is a parabola with a y-intercept of 6 that opens down. y equals x is the line doing something like this. And in order to integrate this, we need to find the points of intersection. And this is something that if you have a calculator you're more than welcome to do on your calculator although you do need to be able to do this by hand but this would be something that's expected you could do on your calculator as well. All right, to find the points of intersection by hand I want to know when are these two functions equal or when is x squared plus x minus 6 equal to 0. When I factor this I can see that it's when x equals negative 3 and when x equals 2. So this must be 2 for the x value, this must be negative 3, and I don't really need to know the y values for my purposes here. I can integrate this from negative 3 to 2. In my upper curve, the entire distance is 6 minus x squared, and I want to subtract my lower curve, which happens to be x, dx. When I integrate this, I'll end up with negative one-third x cubed minus one-half x squared plus six x. And I'm integrating from negative three to two. When we substitute our upper limit of integration two, we'll have negative eight thirds minus 2 plus 12 minus with our lower limits of integration will that be that'll be negative 27 times negative 1 third so that'll be 9 um, what is that 9 minus 9 halves and minus 18 and if we clean this up a bit, we've got what? Negative 8 thirds plus 10 plus 9 
plus 9 halves. And altogether, this is 125 over 6 square units. So there are really three issues here. One, getting your limits of integration. In this case, negative 3 and 2. Two, having the correct integral. And it's always beneficial to show f of x minus g of x before you simplify. And then third, actually getting the correct answer. So in our next, in part two of this video, we'll look at some more examples of just finding the area between two curves.